Welcome again. We are going to be talking about the Trinity in a way that you've never heard it taught before. We're going to be talking about God. We're going to be talking about Jesus. Now, in our regular readings, we are at John chapter 1. Now, in the last session, we read John chapter 1, verse 1, and John chapter 1, verse 14. Now, I'm going to go back to verse 1 because there is so much packed in this verse. I'm going to read a few more verses as well. So let's start out with John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Now, we can't read this passage of scripture without going to the book of Colossians. Now, we know that what we've just read was written by John or Yohokanan or Yochanan, um, the closest of the disciples to the Lord. So um, this is what he said. Now let's read what Paul said in, in uh, the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard this, don't cease praying and making requests for you, that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, that you may walk worthily of the Lord. Very interesting there, that you may walk worthily of the Lord. Not just believe, but walk. Do it. To please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory for all endurance and perseverance with joy, giving thanks to the Father who made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who delivered us out of the power of darkness. Very powerful here. Delivered us out of the power of darkness not grace within the power of darkness, but delivered out of the power of darkness, and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption. The TR reads, through his blood we have redemption. The forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in the heavens and on the earth, visible things and invisible things, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things have, have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things are held together. He is the head of the body, the assembly, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For all the fullness was pleased to dwell in him, and through him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in the heavens, having made peace through the blood of his cross. So you will see there is a similarity between John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and also Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 20. This is a similarity. We talk about how it was Jesus who was involved in the creation of the world. So Jesus was incarnated and this is what you know some people don't understand he existed you know from before the creation and he will exist after all things are done you know he is the one who was and is and is to come he is the word of god okay now there is also spoken here in the book of colossians about jesus being the image of god okay John said that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, okay? So the question here is, is Jesus really just God? Like, is He the Father? Is He the Father? Is He the Spirit? You know, is He, is there a Trinity, or is there only one? Or is the Trinity even, you know, true to the Scriptures at all? Now, you know, there are some people who argue that uh, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And that's true. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. 
those who are proponents of the doctrine of the Trinity would argue, well, the, you know, the, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but we have the, um, the essence of the Trinity, the, the concept of the Trinity in the Bible. When it talks about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, in, in, in almost like they are one, okay? So, is the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity, explicitly and clearly spelt out in Scripture? Well, the answer is not, not as a lot of people believe it to be, okay? Now, let me, let me, you know, the book of Proverbs says, if you answer a matter before you hear it, you are a fool. So don't be a fool, okay? Don't be foolish and just all of a sudden just say, okay, that's it. I, I'm, you know, he's, he's teaching heresy right there. He's saying that there's no Trinity. No, hold on a second. Don't misunderstand me. The Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity and the idea that Jesus and God are one is a mystery, okay? It is something that a lot of people have a hard time to understand, let alone to explain. So it says here, the Word was with God. So that gives you the idea that Jesus is not God because he was with God. How can you have something with something else unless there are two, okay? It says that the word, the word was with God. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Read on, and it says the Word was God, okay? So, God here, we got to understand that God can be spoken of in the idea of, uh, of a person, you know, God as in the Father, or God can be spoken of in the idea of a nature, the nature of God, okay? You know, the Pharisees were very angry when Jesus called God Father because, it's, you know, it says in the scriptures that they, they were angry because Jesus made himself equal with God be, because he called God his Father. So let me say, let me say this again because a lot of people, you know, a lot of you, you need to understand this. Jesus called God his Father, and so in so doing, in the Pharisees' mind, now the Pharisees were very, um, they were very uh, intelligent people. They weren't stupid, okay? They were intelligent people. They said, oh, you, you are blaspheming because you call God your Father, which makes you equal with God, okay? Now, you got to understand what they mean by that, and a lot of people don't understand. I mean, they don't mean that he is making himself equal in all respects, but they're saying that he's making himself equal in the sense that he is part of God, that he is on the same level as God, so to speak, okay? Not that he's equal in all all aspects, like, in like for example, um, you know, a human can can have a child, and that child is equal with the parents, okay? They are equal, not in authority, because we know the parents have more authority, not in knowledge, because the parents have more knowledge, but they are equal in the sense of nature, okay? So a human cannot give birth to a cat. A human cannot give birth to a fish, okay? So they are equal in nature, you know, a dog cannot give birth to um, a tree, okay? It's just, it's not equal in nature. It just, when you call yourself a son of or a daughter of, a child of so-and-so, you are making yourself equal with that particular being in the sense of the nature of that being. You have come from that being. You are partake of the nature of that being. So think of it this way. The, okay, Jesus is God in the sense of he shares in the nature of God because he calls God his father. And he, and indeed God is his father and indeed he is the son of God, okay? Jesus is on par with God in the sense of having the nature of God, okay? Jesus had the nature and has the nature of God. Now, it says also that the word 
uh, was with God. The Word was God. And it also says that in verse 2, in John chapter 1, verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that has been made. Now think about this for a minute. Jesus is the personification or the incarnation of the word. In the book of Bereshit, in the book of Genesis, it says that God created the world and the universe by his word. Let there be light. Let the, you know, let the ground spring forth with herbs. Let us create man in our image. So he created the world by his word. And who is his word or what is his word? I think you know the answer. Jesus is the word. Yeshua is the word of God in the flesh. Okay? That's why both John here and Paul in Colossians chapter 1 makes it very clear that Jesus was involved in the creation of the universe because he is the word of God and it was the word of God that created things, okay? It was the word that created things. Very, very powerful to understand. Now, there's another aspect to this whole thing. It says in the book, book of Colossians that Jesus is the image of God. Okay, image of God. So the word image here could also be translated or understood as, let's say, a picture. He's a picture of God. So let's say you're watching TV and you're watching, you know, some of the old, uh, in some, some old movie or something like that. And let's say, for example, you're watching the Ten Commandments, okay? The movie of the Ten Commandments. And so uh, uh, you, you can, somebody can go, come up behind you and you say, who's that? Who's that that you're watching? What's, who is that right there? And you can say, well, that's uh, Charlton Heston. And the guy, the person can say, are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I know Charlton Heston to see him. That's Charlton Heston. He's playing Moses in the, in the, uh, in the movie, um, The Ten Commandments. So that person can argue with you and say, no, that's not Charlton Heston. That is just pixels on a screen that you're looking at, just colored pixels arranged to make it look like an image of Charlton Heston. So it's not Charlton Heston. No, that's not Charlton Heston you're, you're actually looking at right now. That's just an image of him. In the same way, when you look at Jesus, you can say, that's God. That's God. He is God. Now, he's God in the sense of the nature of God. He has the nature of God and he partakes in the nature of God. So he, he is God in that sense. But is he actually the person of the Father? Well, the answer is, scripturally speaking, no, he's not the actual person of the Father. He is an image of the Father. That's why he said in the book, later on in the book of John, he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Just like how you watch the Ten Commandments. When you saw, you know, you, you, you watch the Ten Commandments, you see Charlton Heston. Do you really see Charlton Heston? Really, really, really see him? No, you see an image of him. But you, you see him. By looking at that movie, you see him. In the same way, by looking at Jesus, you see the Father. Is it really, really, really the Father? No, that's just an image of the Father. But looking at him, you see the Father because he is the image of the Father. In other, in other words, he's just like his Father in, in, in every aspect, okay? He's just like his Father. When you see me, you see my Father, okay? So thanks once again. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the other teachings. Don't forget. I mean, you, I hope and I pray it is a blessing to you. Now, don't, don't miss the next teaching as well because I will be talking about whether or not God creates evil. Hmm. You know, a lot of people say, if God really is, exists, then why? Okay. I'm going to be answering that question. It's going to be an awesome time. So don't miss it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't, for, don't forget to check back regularly. Thanks again. Bless you.